Hey, this is Chris Hansen with E1 Solutions. I'm one of our senior technical consultants, and today we're going to look at running SQL tasks within uh, Smart Connect when you're running an integration. So what I have up uh, currently on display is a employee map that we're using to integrate from a different table or database in our system. So in the background here, you can see I've got a new hire header table. Uh, it's got a processing status field on it, and it's got a whole bunch of new employees that we want to load into GP. Now, in our map that I've got set up currently, I'm reading everything from that table where the processing status is set to ready. So currently, that's giving me three available records to integrate in. And all it's doing is it's just running to the create employee node inside of Smart Connect here to create a new employee record for us in GP. Now, what we're going to add to this are going to be the SQL commands or the SQL tasks that are going to update the source table based on what happens for each record. So if my record goes in successfully, I want to update this processing status to say completed. If it fails, I want to say failed in that processing status field instead. Uh, so to do this, we can go ahead and flip over to our tasks tab, and we're going to run these SQL tasks or these SQL commands on the document level. Uh, so document refers to the record level, and within that, we can either run on the failure or success of that record. So if it succeeds, we mark it as completed. If it fails, it we mark it as failed on there. So I'll add a new SQL command on here. Call this one record succeeded. And on my connection, I'm going to set up a new save connection here. Call it external database. So now when I make my save connection, I don't have to enter this connection string from scratch every time I use it. I can just go ahead and reference the save connection. And if I ever need to change my credentials or password or anything, I can change that once and it's going to roll down to every task that makes use of this save connection. So I'll flip that to my external database and my command is going to be an update statement. I'm just going to update my table. And I want to make sure I put a where clause on here as I'm writing the update statement. So I'm just updating that processing status flag, but I want to make sure I get the right, uh, the right record updated. So I'm going to update that based off the internal employee ID. Now, since I'm doing this at the document level or the record level, I have access to the source fields that I'm using in the map um, in addition to any global variables. So on the insert variable button down at the bottom, we're going to have all the source fields again. So I can just go ahead and grab the correct field that I want to use on here. Now, what might be a little bit different than you're used to on this task is if that value has the possibility of being a string, um, so it's not a numeric field, it could be a, a text field or a bar car or anything like that. I need to go ahead and put these single quotes around the value that's in here. Because when Smart Connect does the replacement, when it runs, it's going to replace that source field name or that global variable name with exactly what the contents are. So if it's a string, we have to make sure we put those single quotes in there so SQL treats it as a string when it tries to run that, rather than trying to run it as an integer. So that looks correct on this end, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then I'm also going to do one on the document failure task as well. It's going to be pretty close to the same thing. I'll just change around what I'm setting that processing status field to instead. So I'll put failed on here. Everything else should be the same. Now when we go through to run this, uh, I'm hoping I have the data source set so that two records are successful and one fails and we can see the different results that we get as it's running through. Well, in this case, instead of having two success and one fail, we get all three failed, which should still be all right. I should be able to see the results on the table here. And I can see all three of my records happen to fail on that. If I flip one of these back to ready, or I flip them all back to ready, say I adjusted the data on there, I'll go back into my map. I'm going to attempt to run this through again on here. Go to my new employee map. I will make my one change that's causing two of those records to fail. There's a field on here that I have to set to zero. Um, that's a default information from employee class field. I'm not providing the class, so since I'm not providing it, I don't want it to try to default uh, the values from that class since I 
I'm not passing through anything. So by setting that to zero, it's going to let these run through how I expect them to. So this was the result I expected the first time when I ran it. Three went through, one, two succeeded, one failed. And on my table, I should see a difference between those top three records. So those two completed, the other one failed on there. So using the SQL command, we're able to go back and update our source table, or you could update any other SQL table you want, as long as you can connect that SQL server um, and run it through that task. So thanks for listening. Uh, we'll see you guys on another Tech Tuesday.